We're just a couple months away from welcoming a new decade, 2020. And here at Channel 8, we're looking back at how the past decades really helped shape Las Vegas. Tonight, we're kicking things off with the 1960s, taking a trip back in time to the nightlife and entertainment scene during that period. Early 1960, a new decade. If evidence is needed that Las Vegas deserves to be dubbed the entertainment capital of the world, look no further than the Summit at the Sands on a Saturday night. Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Sammy Davis Jr., Peter Lawford, and Joey Bishop with a nightly free-for-all of music, comedy, improv, and special guests. Senator John Kennedy from the great state of Massachusetts. Yeah, Jack. This is the birth of the Rat Pack. These shows come a day after filming Ocean's Eleven. How'd it come off? Like a charm. A movie along with Elvis Presley's Viva Las Vegas that will showcase Vegas of the 1960s in the realm of pop culture. Viva! Showrooms were not about profit, but people who would later be lining tables and losing money. As actress Tallulah Bankhead said, we're just the highest paid shills in history. And these entertainers attracted gamblers. The best and the brightest included Liberace, Mr. Warmth, Don Rickles, roasting anyone in sight at the Sahara Lounge. Wayne Newton, performing six shows a day, six nights a week, earning his future title, Mr. Las Vegas. After pressure from the NAACP, civil rights groups, and performers, strip hotels were integrated in 1960. Elvis Presley sold out 837 straight shows at the then International. The list of big names on the strip, seemingly endless. The Jackson Five, Johnny Carson, Bob Newhart, Tom Jones, and Jerry Lewis. Even the biggest band on the planet, the Beatles, were in the Vegas mix. Las Vegas is and was, especially in the 1960s, the entertainment capital of the world. How did you plan a Saturday night back then? What are we <laughs> so going to do? So many options. Go see Rat Pack, Rickles, <laughs> Elvis is down the street. Unreal.